Welcome to Christian River. Look how beautiful this river is. The only problem is the Lemmy is taking over our waterway. It's harmful to our manatees, wildlife, and spring vents. We found a way to suck this up and put nutrients back into our water. After the Olympia is removed, we plant this and it's called Rockstar Eelgrass Plant. Hey, this is Ava, and boy, have things changed since we shot that last video? We have opened up over 850 spring vents, taken out 99% of the phosphorus and 50% of the nitrogen from the water column as part of the restoration process. We have removed 400 million pounds of lingvia, which is the size of about one of the largest cruise ships out there. And we've planted about 420,000 eelgrass plants. You know, when you think about 100 years, it, it's a long time. And most of the time when you see 100 years of progress, you see a lot of concrete, you see a lot of new buildings, you see a lot of technology changes. You very rarely see something put back the way it was. But that's what we're doing to the river. We're making it back the way it was 100 years ago. I grew up right over my shoulder here in a place called Christmas Island that uh, is not too far from where we're standing right now. In the early 80s and through the 80s, I can remember as a kid uh, just the water quality. It was the, the Crystal River and um, you take your raft and float right here and we'd come to Hunter Springs Beach and you know the water quality was gorgeous. You could go along in a boat and you could see schools of mullet underneath the boat. You could see those blackbirds with the white beaks, the coots, all over the river. I mean there was just like massive amounts of ducks, just tons of them. That all went away. When the lingvia came in here, that was gone. There was, there was no ecosystem left. There was no grass, there was no oxygen in the water, there was very little wildlife. And now that it's coming back, we're seeing the resurgence of the wildlife. Went from, you know, limbia and algae and pea soup and, you know, the summer months you wouldn't see really any fish at all in the bay, you know, and now with the grass coming back, the ecosystem recovering, we're seeing more and more fish. The snapper and the snooker stay in year round. The bass, you know, used to a good bass would be about this big. And now we're starting to see those three, four, five pound bass out here on the water again. That's really neat. Gar everywhere, catfish all over the bay again. So all of that, you know, they have places to hide now in that grass, so they're coming back because they have an ecosystem they can live in again. If you look and compare what we've done on the West Coast to what's happening in the Indian River Lagoon. A record-breaking number of manatees are dying in the Indian River Lagoon in Central Florida. Scientists say they are starving to death because poor water quality is killing the seagrass they eat. It's terrible. And I'd like to think that what we're doing here on the West Coast will serve as a model for the entire state. So for that reason, we're gonna to continue to invest. We have a lot more to do as far as rectifying the bays, but we'll also continue then on out the river. We'll be doing the Hunter Springs Basin, Cedar Cove, Miller's Creek, Crystal Shores, including restoring the 128 acres that we've lost in seagrass around our islands in our river. That's an important storm surge protection for the community. Um, many, many of these areas that still need to be protected and restored. And all of you have been such an important part of this project. You know, my grandchildren live here. I hope their grandchildren live here. I want to see this river what it was when I got here. If we can't teach our children to preserve what we have, we can't look forward to having it for the next generation. My name is Taylor Carroll and I am a junior at Chris River High School. In 2015, I was a part of the first fifth grade class to plant the eelgrass at Hunter Springs. It was just so amazing to see how we could transform the water. And we also got to release redfish back into the wild too. And I remember how it looked like before we planted all the eelgrass and it was just like really empty and there weren't a lot of manatees and like it's changed like a lot. When I graduate in 2024, I'm considering going into the agriculture field and pursuing a career in aquaculture, which is the study of fish and ecosystems and how it contributes to the world around us. And 
I just really think that this experience really geared me towards that career. It's truly incredible. When we originally started the project in 2015, the goal is to implement a seven-year, $40 million project to be completed in time for the City of Crystal River's centennial celebration. And that's July 3rd, 2023, and we're going to make it. That's so exciting. <laughs> I want to wish Crystal River a very happy birthday. 100 years, you're still very young. I'll see you in the next 100, hopefully. Yeah, happy birthday, centennial celebration this year. We're so excited to be able to celebrate it. Happy birthday, Crystal River. Happy birthday, Crystal River. Happy birthday, Crystal River. Happy birthday, Crystal River.